Hello, and today I want to talk about a brand new cost-effective solution from the guys at Kunaka Tatube, and it's the TS231P3. Now, the 31P series has been around for a number of years. It brings uh, a QNAP NAS solution that has a number of its software attributes built in, but arrives at a price point which won't exactly break the bank. This device arrives at about 270 to 280 quid, including the VAT, without the hard drive media, and although a lot of its specifications aren't exactly gonna knock your socks off, I will say that it does arrive with a great deal of support of a number of cool features in the modern age of NAS, particularly in 2020, a very hot day in 2020, that will appeal to a number of you. So this device, the CPU inside is the an Annapurna, it's the AL314, a quad core based CPU. It is a 32 bit ARM, let's you know, not beat about the bush, it's hardly gonna knock your socks off, but that CPU is still a quad core 1.7 gigahertz processor. And that also arrives with support of uh, DDR3L memory, arriving with two gig, uh, that's 1866 megahertz memory that can be upgraded all the way to eight gig in a single sodium slot. So that's the internal hardware. The external hardware is a little bit more impressive. Um, it's a standard plastic chassis there. It does have a USB copy button on the front, which I'll always be a fan of. If you look at the rear of the device, we can see that it has got two network interface ports there. And again, one of them is one GBE, but the other one is 2.5 GBE. So support of 250 megabytes uh, of transmission there for a supported switch or network environment. And of course, two USB 3 ports there will also open the door towards a user being able to add external storage, uh, adding a UPS or USB printer, or supported peripheral devices and USB webcams. But you can also use the QNAP um, USB to 5GBE adapter, allowing you to add a 5GBE connection to this. Now, this is a hardware review, and of course I'm going to talk about the software a little bit, but I want to focus on the hardware of this particular NAS. Because most users, when they buy a NAS solution, will fall into two main categories. There'll be the category that people that buy it for the hardware. They want to use their own third-party um, stuff. They want to use their own software. They want to use their own PCs and their own cameras. Maybe even their own server. They want to use this as another tier to their hardware environment. They're not really that fussed about the software because they're not really going to interact with it. Now, the other kind of buyer is someone that is buying the complete solution. They're buying the software and the hardware. Now, this is a solution, I think, that's more aimed at the first person. This does, this does have a lot of software inside. It supports Surveillance Station, a Hybrid Backup Sync 3, one of my favorite backup tools out there. QMaggie, the AI-powered photo recognition tool, multimedia console for handling uh, thumbnail generation and indexing to an intelligent and automated fashion. Malware remover, security counselor, um, antivirus support. Um, there are lots of things built into this that a business user will use. On top of that, file searching with file station, queue search and queue filing create an intelligent, practically three-dimensional storage environment where you can search for things as quickly as possible but still make a very, very complex and very customizable hot and cold storage environment for yourself. They support third-party applications as well to a high degree and because of that 2.5 GB connection on the rear, as well as a myriad of multimedia and client, um, sorry, uh, mobile applications and client applications for desktop and mobile platforms, this device can be interacted with in a number of different ways and at a number of different speeds, with that CPU, although very modest, being able to do the job. But you're not getting the full QNAP experience from this. You're not getting the QTS with all its bells and whistles, its support of QVR Pro, its support of virtualization and virtualization station. You do have support of containers, but you don't have Linux station. You don't have HD station because of a lack of HDMI. And what you're getting is, I think, a more streamlined QNAP NAS experience, both in terms of hardware and software. Now, don't forget that budget. This is still a two bay that's knocking around at 270 to 80 quid. That's not a lot of money. And to be fair, they are giving you quite a lot for that price tag. But if you are thinking of investing in NAS like this for your home or business environment, you need to know it comes with a lower glass ceiling than most. Most Don't concentrate on the power of that CPU 1.7 gigahertz times four. Look at the type of CPU. It's an ARM 32 bit, which is far more um, geared and proficient in efficiency and being low power consumption. If you're running uh, a metered power connection or if you're on like a boat or something and you've got, or it's somewhere in your house that has limited 
in, uh, limited power connectivity like an office at the bottom of the garden this may be very well suited because its power draw is going to be very very low even when you are going nuts and battering it there now it does have a lot of the cool features that I would expect from our QNAP now. For a start, a very rugged chassis there. Even though it's plastic and it's white, which I know a lot of you aren't hugely impressed by, I really like this metal blue strip there on the front. The fact that there's a USB copy button for me, and it's USB 3 throughout with two on the front, one on the back. To me, it does have a lot of that hardware aesthetic I associate with QNAP and personally love. The trays, although they're plastic in design, they do take the very latest three and a half inch drives very, very easily, all the way up to 16 TB from Seagate Ironwolf. So you do have a huge amount of storage potential on this that can be scaled. You can upgrade your storage in its lifespan, even though this NAS has a very low price point. It supports almost all of the USB expansions from QNAP in the TR and TL series. A lot of brands on a unit at this level do not include a high level of expandability. They come with a glass ceiling, not just in power, but also in capacity in their lifespan. Now, the trays themselves, I've already got a drive pre-installed inside there, but if we open up the other bay, take a look inside, you can see it's quite well spaced out, quite a lot of ventilation inside. We've got those two SATA bays there at the rear. Talking of ventilation, we have got ventilation on one side there, built up let's get that there on screen there's nothing on the other side we have a little bit of ventilation there on the base by the legs but it's white the lights are really not enjoying this now and if we look at the rear we've got that fan based on the back of the device that can be um, automatic or manually set as needed i'd leave it on automatic and again you can add support uh, peripheral devices but little things about this now do annoy me the fact that it's only one 2.5 gbe port instead of two Seems like a needless means to lower its total ability to fit it into somewhere in the portfolio. I'm not overly impressed by a single 2.5 GBE port. That CPU, although modest, I reckon could, with the right storage media, push that 5 GBE. And the fact that this device supports the 5 GBE to USB adapter from QNAP only further enforces that point to me, that this could have had a 5 GBE port for a very minimum price increase. Um, the plastic chassis, again, I know plastic chassis for me have a lot of advantages in terms of low noise, um, but they're not as good for heat. When you have a metal chassis, the whole thing works as a great big heat sink, dissipating a lot of that heat. A plastic chassis has a tendency to hold that heat in, so more ventilation is generally needed and those fans will creep up. Um, an advantage of plastic trays, of course, is the fact that where if you're using more enterprise-grade hard drives, which make a lot more uh, like hums and whirs and clicks and stuff while they're in operation plastic trays will dampen that a lot in a way that metal chassis and metal trays will just if anything increase that noise but plastic trays always feel a bit cheap and particularly when they're white plastic which i know is more my problem than anything and these aren't cheap trays they're quite nice trays in fact if i can slot them in properly while looking at what i'm doing if we look at these trays they're even screwless in design Installing a hard drive is very, very straightforward on this device. So, even though this is a budget solution, it does have a lot of the QNAP charm on it. But, it comes down to whether you're buying this for the hardware or the software. Because even though this is a combined hardware um, software solution, I still argue that what you gain in hardware and software on this is still moderate at best. And you have to be aware that what you're paying for is still a budget solution and that's why this doesn't have a plus on the end that's why this isn't part of the d series so as a budget solution i really like it as a budget solution but it's the people that think that this is going to give you the same as a solid intel powered nas i advise you to spend a little bit more a couple of hundred quid there get yourself in something intel powered but the rest of you if you're running a small office a small shop with a few cameras or a simple backup for the home with some low level media streaming this could well do the job for you but thank you so much for watching this has been our hardware overview of the ts 231 p3 if you want to learn more there is a link to, in the description to nas compares full review you can go to the guys at span.com uh, the data storage experts to help you choose the right mouse for you click like if you've enjoyed this video click subscribe if you want to learn more and i will see you next time